<laughs> I never used it, you know. I know. I I, uh, okay, if we can get everyone to take their seats and settle down so we can get started this evening. We're already running a few minutes late. So if everyone would please take their seats, we'll get started. We'll call to order the public hearing for the purpose of soliciting input with respect to a real estate contract for the purchase of properties at 24 Branch Street and 93, 97, and 101 Division Street, the St. Lucie's Church, Rectory, and Garage, as submitted by Michael LeBlanc, Director of Finance. Anyone who wishes to address the board with respect to this uh, potential sale should sign up with the City Sheriff, Mr. Conway. Testing. Please state your name and address for the record, and there's a five-minute limit. I'll give you a one-minute heads up. Mr. Sheriff, if you'd call the first speaker. First speaker tonight from 100 Jefferson Square, Ainsley McLaughlin. Good evening, esteemed alderman. Um, I'm calling, or I'm coming, coming this evening to speak to you about the uh, purchase of St. Lucie's and the associated properties. Um, I am a firm believer in um, the opportunity that exists when you bring resources to people rather than making them seek out those resources. And I think that um, having a uh, a property such as this that we could utilize for multiple services, co-located under one roof, uh, would benefit the people who live in the North End. Um, as a nurse, uh, I'm hopeful that we could use it as clinical space, as well as an opportunity to um, bring people together for mental health, Wouldn't dental be. services, um, behavioral health services, and other services that are much needed in that area. In addition to being uh, a huge space. I think um, having it located at the center of a constellation of schools is particularly beneficial. Um, Waterbury was noted as one of the areas uh, that is in highest need of school-based health centers, and I think that speaks to the need for services for families um, in our city, medical and behavioral and um, dental services. Um, and so I think that this is a great opportunity for us to take advantage of those findings and act upon them by um, making a purchase of this kind that would allow the, um, the services to meet people where they are in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker from 1400 Meriden Road, Martin Spring. I'm here also to make a comment in, on this uh, facility. I think it's a good idea, but um, I'm just puzzled. It's over almost $500,000 for the purchase of this building. I don't know who's going to be uh, receiving the money on this. I know if it's the archdiocese. So I told this gentleman over here, I'm, I'm Protestant. I'm not Catholic. So I mean, I don't know how that works and where that money goes. But I still think it's a good idea. And I think it's a, going to be a good fit in the North End because there's a lot of uh, people there in need of services. So I just think, uh, you know, because people probably don't have any cars, they have no transportation. So being right there on Division Street, the old St. Lucie's Church, I believe I used to play bingo there a long time ago. But, um, you know, being a longtime resident of Waterbury and knowing many parts of Waterbury, and I've been up through the North End many times. And I've seen a lot of despair up there and, and people, you know, down and out and they just need some services. So, again, you know, I think this would be a very good fit for the North End because uh, Waterbury Hospital, a lot of people, they go, you know, especially in the minority community, they go to uh, Waterbury Hospital and they go to St. Mary's. And I heard some horror stories that uh, even before COVA and even after COVA or during COVA, there was an awful long wait for these poor people, and I felt bad for them. Uh, you know, I used to live up at the North End a long time ago with my family. My parents always had rents, and we rented over there. You, I don't know if you know where Lakewood Auto Body is, but we lived right across the street for many years on the first floor. And uh, I've seen a lot of, you know, uh, despair and people down and out and, uh, you know, feeling really bad about circumstances and the way people were being treated, especially minorities. And I, I went to uh, Webster School that was up on the hill. Now I'm giving away my age. I'm not that old, but <laughs> I went up there and I remember, you know, hanging out with a lot of 
minority kids, and uh, but all race, creeds, and colors, and we got along really good. So I think this is, uh, you know, this is something really good for the uh, the neighborhood. And I would ask you, uh, the board of all, I mean, all the members, both Republican and Democrat, to support this and keep that in mind. That you know, these folks out there, they need this. They need this really bad. And I really wish they would more facilities around Waterbury, especially now with COVID being extinguished, if you will, and hopefully it's not going to come back. And you know, again, a, a lot of people out there, in my opinion. They, they, they looking for something to be positive in their neighborhood. And that's something I think that you guys should approve. Again, I'm not, a, you know, being a conservative, I'm pretty worried, no, not really worried, but I'm kind of concerned about the, the cost factor. I, again, I, I said that, you know, I'm Protestant, I'm not Catholic, but I don't know where that money's going to. And you guys should explain that. Maybe the mayor is here tonight or somebody here it's, uh, I know Michael LeBlanc is here. Maybe he can explain where the money's going to and how much is it coming in. If it's coming in through the COVID relief, is it going to be on the backs of the taxpayers? I think it's a good fit, and I, and I do support it. So, again, you know, something I hopefully you guys can explain to me as a Waterbury taxpayer, a longtime resident of the city of Waterbury, how is this money going to be spent and where is it coming from? Thank you. Next speaker from 413, Harpers Ferry Row, Paul Condash. Mr. President, members of the board, my name is Paul Condash. I reside at 413, Harpers Ferry Road. Uh, as this purchase would most definitely be approved, as it should be, I would just like to remind us that we need to look into funding some of the items and suggestions that have been crossed across this board the last several months. Thank you. Next speaker from 585 Park Road, Thomas Pelletier. Thomas Pelletier, 585 Park Road. I'm uh, up here tonight in support of the uh, item with St. Lucie's uh, Church. Um, I think it's a great fit for the area. Um, uh, as a employee in the North End section for the city of Waterbury and uh, what PAL has done for the North End, I think that this facility and everything that has been said, what it's going to be used for is going to be uh, a great thing for that area of the city. Uh, we have a lot of residents that don't have cars that have some issues and, and problems that they need access to. Uh, help. I think that this is going to be a great fit, and it's just another uh, uh, example of this administration going neighborhood by neighborhood, uh, making sure that the citizens of the city get access to uh, the needs and uh, help that they need. I think that it's going to be a great fit. I also have spoken to members uh, that I know that were parishioners of St. Lucie's Church uh, that have also told me that they think that this is going to be a great fit for uh, the church. Uh, you know, I think it's going to be just great having it used again for something that uh, what the church has been known for helping people, and uh, that's what we're going to do uh, uh, there. So. I would ask that uh, that you guys do whatever you have to do to pass this, and uh, let's keep making this city a great place as uh, we've been doing since the mayor took in office. Thank you. Next speaker from 80 Phoenix Avenue, Christine Bianchi. Good evening, Board of Aldermen members, Mayor Larry. Um, I'm Christine Bianchi, the Chief Development Officer at Staywell Health Center, and I'm here um, both representing Staywell and uh, personally in support of the proposed uh, purchase of the um, property at St. Lucie's for a health center. Um, I have been at Staywell for 26 years working in healthcare for this community. And I also have um, a familial relationship with St. Lucie's. My 
um, great grandmother was the organist there, and my grandfather worked on Division Street. So it's um, lovely to hear um, both of my two um, passions, my family and um, my work in healthcare, come together with the hopes of something really promising um, in that neighborhood. Um, and as you know, Stay Well is the community-based health center that's been here in this community and committed to Waterbury, led by people from Waterbury, Waterbury residents, for 50 years. And over 19,000 City of Waterbury residents call us their medical home. Um, as a key service provider in Waterbury's healthcare infrastructure, as I said, we concur with Mayor Leary that there continues to be residents in need of healthcare. So for example, if we look at the data, from the zip code 06704, only 55.43% of low-income residents in that neighborhood have access to any health center, compared to 83.12% of those with the 06702 zip code. So it can't be explained that perhaps people in 06704 have fewer health care needs, because when we look at that, the HRSA data shows us that 35% of adults who live in 06704 have been told at one time that they have high blood pressure. So the need there um, for people in terms of numbers, but also in terms of the significant clinical concerns do warrant uh, moving forward with this proposal. So StayWell would like to share um, our most recent efforts to bring services to geographic locations that are close and convenient to resident neighborhoods, which is what this proposal also does. In August, the trailer that formerly served as the school based health center at Driggs School was moved to 750 East Main Street. So work will continue to secure that trailer as required, working with the various city departments and obtain a Department of Public Health licensure for a fully operating service center. So the center will bring an additional access point for those within that neighborhood, in addition to being the gateway for residents in 06705. So in conclusion, Staywell applauds Mayor O'Leary's persistent efforts to support the development of resources needed by residents. And we are continually seeking innovative ways to connect with and serve all of the city's residents, and particularly its most challenged. Working together, our community will be able to overcome current challenges that we foresee as well that include staff, coming to Waterbury and working in all of our health centers, so we're not just taking moving staff from one organization to another. I'm sure we're all in support of that. Um, security concerns, specifically evening and weekend hours uh, during operations, and then continuity of care. So we look forward to being a partner in, uh, with the city, and continued partner, and with the other organizations um, that all of you and the mayor will bring together uh, to continue to respond and provide uh, for our health care needs of our residents. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last speaker, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. <clears throat> With that, we'll close the public hearing and call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen for Monday, September 19th, 2022. If everyone would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a silent prayer. Alderman Bernali? Present. Alderman Cavallo? Alderman D.G. Carlo. Here. Alderman Dorso? Here. Alderman Hunter? Here. Alderman Lopez? Here. Alderman Markey? Present. Alderman Matthews? Present. Alderman Martinez McCarthy? Here. Alderman New James? Present. Alderman Roman. Alderman Salvio. Present. Alderman Weaver. Here. Alderman Zimmerman. Present. And Alderman Pernaruski. Here. 13 present, two absent. Thank you. We have a quorum. And just for the record, Alderman Cavallo is uh, traveling in Europe, and Alderman Roman was in 
Puerto Rico, and, well, he's still there because he could not get out because the flights were canceled as a result of the hurricane. So um, with that, the next item on our agenda would be the officially scheduled presentations, and with that, I would turn it over to Mayor O'Leary. Well, good evening, everyone. We thought we would have a little surprise for you tonight. These meetings have been getting a little, you know, we got to liven things up a little bit. <laughs> so, on August 14th, which was a Sunday, I was doing my morning blight cruise, and uh, this particular Sunday morning, I chose to go up on the west side of town. I was looking at some problem off of Park Road, and I was fishing my way around, and I came down Delaware Avenue, and there was this gentleman, Mr. Billis, come on up here. Bonnie, come on up, please. Yeah. <laughs> And Mr. Billis was pushing a shopping cart, and this was on the front of it. <laughs> that was on the back of him. <laughs> and <laughs> so I said, oh, hi. Who are you? He recognized me, thank God. And I, <laughs> I said, who are you? And he said, my name is John Billis. And I said, what are you up to? And he said, well, I've been doing this for a while. And he said, uh, I really enjoy doing it. It gets me out of the house and it makes me feel good. I'm a retired school teacher and, um, and I really like it. And he, I, I really like what I'm doing for the city and people drive by and they beep their horns and they wave and they say nice things. And I said, well, where do you live? And he said, well, I live on Gaylord. And I said, oh, do you live near Jeff Berger? <laughs> and he said, yeah, I live right next to him. I said, oh, well, Noreen's beautiful. <laughs> I was teasing a little, but Anyways, we had a few uh, laughs and a great conversation, and um, not last Sunday, the Sunday before, I was on my cruise on Lower Highland Avenue, and there he was. So he's moving around the city pretty well, and I thought it was amazing. Can you imagine, and I thought of Bonnie right away, because she's been such an advocate as chairwoman of the, uh, the Litter Control Commission, and so I said, well, we're going to have a little party on September 19th. We're going to recognize Mr. Billis, and we're going to recognize Bonnie for their commitment, long commitment, to blight and litter remediation in the city of Waterbury. And so I have an um, official citation for Mr. Billis, and I know uh, Bonnie would like to say a few words, and then we'll ask uh, Senator Hartley and Representative uh, uh, Napoli as well to say a few words, but I would like to say that this is, may it be hereby known, the city of Waterbury offers its recognition to Mr. John Billis for his years of volunteer service to the community and supporting environmentalism through trash removal in our city. Mr. John Billis, a retired French teacher who worked in the Weston school system for 35 years. Upon retirement, began daily walks through the neighborhood and recognized the environmental need for trash and litter removal. Thereafter, established himself as the litter patrol, and his daily commitment has resulted in the neighborhood being deeply enriched, not only by cleaning up the environment, but by the lives touched with friendships and connections through his endearing personality, quick wit, and amazing sense of humor. Heretofore, Mr. John Billis has become an example to the community of what can be accomplished by just one person. The city of Waterbury extends its very best wishes on this occasion for being self-proclaimed as the Litter Patrol given this 19th day of September 2022. And if you notice in the back, along with the uh, uh, Representative Berger are several other uh, great people, including his great wife, Noreen, by the way. And uh, 
they are all neighbors of Mr. Billis who wanted to come down and recognize him. So I said, what can I do for you? And he said, I need more of these. All right. So then, Ronnie, will you pull that cover off? I thought, well, if we can give Mr. Billis one of these and maybe a couple extras, maybe the best way to do this, too, would be to engage our alders. Yeah. Right? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we're going to call you up, and Mr. Billis is going to give you your tool. We'll start with Alder Woman. Belinda Weaver, come on across. <laughs> Followed by Alderman Markey and Alderman Newjame. Followed by Alderman Hunter, Alderman State Representative DGO Von Carlo, Alderwoman Zimmerman, come on up. John, you got to give them to them. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> nice. There you go. So I thought this would be fun because I thought maybe everyone would kind of lead by example, like Mr. Phyllis, including myself. There you go. And we'll start with Alderman Mike Salvio, Alderman Dorso, Alderman Brunelli. All followed by Alderman Matthews, Alderwoman Sandra Martinez McCarthy, and Alderman Lopez. And Mr. President, we're not leaving you out. Come on down. <laughs> so we're going to have some fun on Earth Day. And hopefully more opportunities. And if you guys are out there doing litter pickup, you could give us a call and Jennifer will come up and we'd be happy to take your picture and lead by example. Our city clerk, Mike Dalton, I'd like you to stand up here just for a minute, Mike. President Fenerowski, hang out with me for a minute. Our City Sheriff Steve Conway. All right. And you, sir, get the Cadillac. Because we know you'll probably wear it out. And if you do, I have more. I know. Well, with the amount of work you're doing, it's no wonder. I would like Senator Hartley to say a few words and Representative Napoli and then maybe have you say a few words. Would that be okay? Senator? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and uh, so this is a real uh, joy to celebrate here uh, with our, our self-proclaimed litter uh, patrol who now has a battalion of, um, of workforce. Uh, so John, um, with the, Representative Napoli and um, President of the Board, Penarduski, um, I think we, um, at last year's Neighborhood Council dinner, um, also recognized you with a, um, an official uh, proclamation. Um, because the work that you do, first of all, you took it on yourself. Um, it has exponentially scaled. And it's kind of like that broken windows theory, where you, know, you repair the broken window um, in the community and it begins to scale across the community and everybody uh, participates and cleans things up and that's exactly what John has been doing um, and uh, it it's contagious um, either by um, peer pressure or by people recognizing yes every little bit helps um, and and also it's an incredible message to our youth 
um, who sometimes are just, you know, carefree about everything in life as well as tossing the ice cream paper out. Uh, so I can't thank you enough, um, and we are so proud of you, and I guess um, as the former uh, French teacher, I would just like to say to you and Bonnie, whose mission this has been um, in, for the betterment of our community and our city, merci, sir. Mayor Leary, thank you so much for having this important event tonight. Um, I can tell you the first time I saw John, I, I was, it was on Gaylord Drive, and I looked out my window and I saw somebody with a cart picking up litter, and I ran outside with my bare feet to meet him and thank him for his good work. And now we see him all over our community, and I see people pull their cars over and talk to him, and that's who John is. He's loyal to Waterbury. He's determined to clean up our city, blight by blight, litter by litter. He is, he is Waterbury, and he's a retired teacher and he could be doing a lot of things every day, but instead he wakes up with a sense of purpose, with a sense to make Waterbury a better place. And I am so happy for you, you deserve this, and you truly make Waterbury a much better place. Thanks, friend. I can now call upon Ms. Bonnie Arentis to come up. Uh, she's, of course, our chairwoman of the litter Control Commission for uh, 25 years, and also was a retired school teacher. Bonnie, come on up, sit if you want. I, I, I first met John when um, we were volunteers at the St. Stanislaus Bingo, which the church doesn't exist anymore, but at the time, and Paul Santer was the, the lead volunteer, and he, um, put in a bulletin of another church that they need help at St. Stan's. And when John saw the name Santier, he remembered back when uh, his father went to get a job in one of the factories at Scovels, thank you. And um, Paul Santier's uncle, Bobby, stood with uh, Mr. Billis, the father, and made him feel comfortable at the factory. And he saw that name and he said, I've got to pay this guy back, this family back. And so he came over to St. Stan's, doesn't belong to that church, he's not of that nationality, but he came and he took over when Paul passed away and he led the whole uh, volunteer bingo. And that's how I met John. And then all of a sudden, I saw him one day picking up litter, so he took on an second job and we just admire him i mean we are the litter commission but he's the one picking up litter and um we're very grateful to john we're very grateful to all of you for listening john is a great man i have found out he just wants to give back to the city that he loves thank you run up john and Last but not least, with the fall coming, we thought we'd get, make sure you were nice and warm. And we got something special for the winter for you. No, wait, this is a fall wear. <laughs> the winter wear is really nice. And then we'll have something nice in the spring. Without further ado, Mr. John Billis. is near me. If only my mother and father, my late mother and father, could see me now. They wouldn't believe it. Uh, I appreciate this uh, opportunity to share a few words with you. Uh, first of all, before I forget uh, in my presentation, uh, Bonnie Arentis and I have been friends now for many years. And if there's any one person responsible for the inspiration I've received to do as much as I can for this city. It's through Bonnie Arentis. She is the most tireless person whose efforts day after day are to improve the beautification of the city of Waterbury. 
and boy, could we all benefit from that. So, Bonnie, again, I've thanked you in the past. I've called you my mentor, and that's something she doesn't want to hear, modest lady that she is. But I mean that with all sincerity. Thank you, Bonnie. Some people may wonder, why, why does a guy with a BA and MA in French literature from Rutgers, uh, why is he spending his time day after day cleaning the streets of Waterbury? Number one reason, I don't like it when people dump on my city. And if I can in some small way, no, I cannot cover the entire city. So I've limited myself to the streets of Bunker Hill. Uh, but it's with the intention of, uh, you know, one person. Can you imagine the number of people necessary to throw all that litter around? I'm one person who can take care of all of that. One against 100, I'll take those odds any day. But then I have some personal reasons why I do what I do. And a lot of them have to do with my years as a teacher. For instance, uh, as a teacher, one of the reasons I love that profession was that uh, no two days were ever alike. You can imagine a classroom of 20, 25 students, they're all bringing in their you know, personal happiness, sorrow, whatever, and that change from day to day. And you have to deal with it. I like to think that I taught with a sense of humor, because if you know anything about French grammar, arr, uh, a little humor goes a long way. So uh, with... Um, the idea of no two days ever alike, well, guess what? I found that same joy walking through the streets of my city, meeting you know, countless people, and having things happen that, uh, yeah, as I say, from day to day, you never know. So it, it literally excites me. Sorry, I lead a lonely life, but it's something that gives me a lot of personal pleasure. For instance, one day, true story, I'm going up Park Road. Uh, if you know from CVS up Park Road, there's a rather serious uh, curve. So whether the cars are coming down, going up at great speeds, I've been warned to watch myself as police cars have stopped and told me, hey, be careful, this is a crazy road. One day, big delivery truck right in that curve, which means that any cars coming down the street have to pass in the other lane. They can't see the cars speeding up in the other lane, as I approached with my basket, I said, this is an accident ready to happen. So what did I do? I didn't have a cape to put on, but I just stood so everyone could see, and then <laughs> for about 10, 15 minutes, traffic got a little lighter, but there were no accidents I was pleased to see. Uh, then, just two or three days ago, again, lonely bachelor that I am, this, this, this was special. Uh, it was at the bottom of Robin Street, cars ready to go up Robin Street. I'm with my basket, very near. The car stops, middle of the road. The lady looks at what I'm doing, screams from the window, I love what you're doing. I love you. She blows kisses and then says, God bless you. Drives off. Bachelor that I am, I take that as a marriage proposal. Uh, next time, I'll know to take down the license. Another, mm, when I retired 13 years ago, my colleague said, oh, Come September, hmm, this month, you're going to regret it. You know, you're out of the classroom, and that transition is hard. All I have to do is think about countless French essays that have to be corrected. I don't miss that. What I do miss is to talk. I mean, seven, eight hours in school. Uh, intense conversations with students, with colleagues. Every September, I would be hoarse for about a week till my vocal cords got used to the, ah, uh, 
intense talking, um, which I didn't do obviously all summer. And so uh, on this activity of mine, ah, nothing gives me greater pleasure than meeting people. And my goal is to put a smile on their face if, if I can. And so, um, for instance, one example, uh, I'll see, I love when I see a young mother with a baby in a stroller, and uh, here I am with my carriage, and as we get closer, you know, I will tell the young mother, I'm pushing garbage in this, um, in this store carriage. You're pushing a precious, sorry, a precious cargo and the smile comes on her face. But ain't that the truth? Lastly, I want to talk about the kindness of strangers. Just as you have, you're not strangers to me, but um, the, the people who have um, shown their appreciation for what I'm trying to do, this, sh this shirt is a perfect example. I did not purchase this shirt. I was walking down West Main Street once, and a young man, coming out of his house was uh, bringing, it was a Friday, so he was bringing his garbage bins off the street, saw me, had some kind words for me, thank you very much. Then he said, you know, I work for a clothing store in Cheshire and they allow me to, ex and he uh, air quoted, they allow me to experiment. So I, I imagine he was new at his job. So he said, I'm going to make you a litter patrol shirt. I have to believe um, fewer people think uh, I'm homeless because as I was pushing my cart with cans and bottles in there, um, I, I, I know where the idea is coming from. And the last example I have of kindness of strangers, I believe uh, I'll refer to her, her as Leda, Lady Moira. Moira. Oh. oh, one of my favorite people in Waterbury. And last summer, she saved my bacon because it was one of those blistering hot days. I love the heat. I hate the cold. I don't have much insulation on my bones. So I love the heat. I've never had a problem. I did that day. And I was beginning to suffer heat exhaustion. I won't do that again, that's for sure. So I managed to get to her store. There's a nice wrought iron bench in the front of the store. So I sat there. Uh, the dizziness, the upset feeling, I thought, oh, oh I, I went too far today. And uh, one of her employees came out of the store with a beetle, imagine. No, no, she had a beetle in her hand out of the flower store, didn't want to kill it, and liberated it, you know, then took one look at me and uh, asked, you know, um, are you all right? <laughs> So I, I responded somewhat like, uh, no, I wasn't all right. Invited me in the store right away. Felt like a meat locker in there because of the flowers, of course. Uh, but oh, it was very refreshing. And then, of course, Moira, after offering me some water, then asked, how are you getting home? And, well, the normal way. I'm going to push my wagon up that street that's right by her store. It's called Woodside Avenue. It's a mountain. So she looks at me and then says, are you crazy? I don't want you dying on my property. Bless you, bless you, bless you. <laughs> so she gets an employee to go out to the van. I said, oh wait, no, 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 I got a dirty carriage. It's full of you know, garbage and cans and bottles. I said, not a problem. She gets one of her vans, uh, get, puts the air conditioning on, gets the driver, to drive me home. I felt like the President of the United States. Thank you. I'm wondering, I have the, the, the right audience in front of me, is it possible to, I don't, I don't know, in other neighborhoods, is this going on? Uh, gee, you know, okay, I'm just one person. There gotta be other people who have, you know, the same idea that they contribute in this way and really you know, turn our city, you know, eliminate so much of the blight just in the gutters and the sewers. Sewers, uh, 
people must think that's a garbage can, you know, because every sewer is just filled with all kinds of cups and papers, and I, I just don't get it. So is it possible to initiate through publicity maybe or, you know, to get at least announced, hey, we're looking for people who would like to volunteer in such a way, and if I can be a cheerleader for that and perhaps give a pep talk, and it would be right from the heart, because uh, I hope you can see, you know, I very much believe in, the, in this effort. Uh, I'd be very, w more than just willing to you know, participate. And if I can ask, oh my God, how can I ask for anything after this wonderful occasion? But if you ever see me in the streets, could you uh, give me a little beep, 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 beep? It really puts pep in my step. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. In addition to the city citation, I just want to mention that uh, Congresswoman Hayes also dropped off a, a special congressional recognition to you as well, sir. So congratulations from Congresswoman Hayes as well. Here you go. Mr. President, that's the presentation, but um, I do, while I have all these wonderful people in the room, as I bet they're going to leave once we start the meeting, but I just want to take a moment to recognize our city clerk. Yesterday was a great day over at Old Pine Grove Cemetery. Uh, Mr. President was there. Um, Senator Hartley, Representative Napoli, other elected were there. Uh, it was in recognition for uh, the Vietnam veteran that Mr. Dalton is. It was in he started this initiative where he is refurbishing the uh, tombstones or gravestones of veterans, which is an amazing initiative and an amazing idea. So this past year, uh, he and his team were recognized for refurbishing 240 veteran tombstones. So uh, special recognition for that. We had State of Connecticut uh, Veterans Commissioner uh, Saudi was there, and we also had uh, some beautiful music, um, amazing, uh, patriotic, and, uh, and Danny Boy was played. So we were pretty happy. And at the end of the day, I'm also proud to announce to all of you that not only is Mike and his team uh, working on the tombstones in Waterbury, but it's uh, it, just like I'm hoping tonight's occasion for Mr. Billis, it can be contagious, it should be contagious. All these things are the right thing to do. And in Mike Dalton's case, there are now six other towns in Connecticut that have taken on the refurbishment of the veterans' stone. So congratulations, Mike Dalton. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you all. Mr. Billis, congratulations again. Who knew you were such a rank and tour as well as uh, a, a great volunteer? So, <laughs> Thank you. Um, with that, the next item on the agenda would be public speaking. Anyone who wishes to address the board, uh, please sign up with the city sheriff. Please state your name and address for the record. There's a five-minute limit, and I'll give you a one-minute heads up. Sheriff. Sure. First speaker from 413 Harpers Ferry Row, Paul Condes. You know, just give it one, let's let him filter out, yeah. Jeff, is that for you? <laughs> <laughs> Go 
Go ahead, Mr. Kandesh. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. My name is Paul Kandesh. I reside at 413 Harper's Ferry Road. Just so you know, it's tough to be the next act to follow <laughs> such a wonderful presentation, but I'm going to do my best. I recently watched several reruns of the meeting that this board interviewed the public works heads. And I noticed there were some pointed questions asked about street paving. And I wasn't quite sure the first time I saw it if I was getting it correct, so I ran it three times. Um, those questions came from several members of the board that are here tonight. I don't believe those questions were ever answered firmly. They were talked through, talked about, they were deflected. But we were never given a final answer on how the streets of Waterbury are selected to be paved. The final suggestion that was given was that you call and have your street placed on a waiting list to be paved. That's not how you pave streets in a city the size of Waterbury. Engineers usually go out in other cities and based on some kind of a grading system, determine which streets need to be paved and in what order they need to be paved based on data, travel, if it's dangerous, what, whatever the reason, whatever the, the grading is, there has to be a grading system put in place. If we are relying on citizens to call, I'm going to call every day till I get my street paved. That's not how it's, it should be done. With the hundreds of millions of dollars that we have coming into the city in the last several years, I think we should get the street paving done now and not next year. We just can't wait. There are some roads that are horrendous, and they weren't on the list. So I have to call to get that road on the list? That's not the right way to do things. Let's get the proper funding out and get the roads paved. Thank you. Next speaker from 1400 Meriden Road, Martin Spring. Martin Spring, 1400 Meriden Road. I'm um, trying to dry off from being wet. Um, I just want to say that the Veterans Headstone Restoration Project, I was very honored that Mike, you invited us. A lot of our guys are veterans themselves, and they belong to the Sons of American Revolution and Sons of Union veterans. And uh, I don't know, the mayor didn't mention that, but I don't know why, but we were there, and we were there for you, Mike. So I do appreciate you inviting us. And uh, we had a good time. And I always tell his people, you know, they think we have costumes. We have uniforms. <laughs> and we're all wool. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't understand and try to imagine all the reenacting I did with Revolutionary War and Civil War. I told that to Michael. Full pack, they'd have to go march 25, 30 miles. Anybody that was a veteran, they know what it's like. And the heat and the cold and everything. And you got to go out there and go right into battle and fight a battle. And that was really, really hot on those guys. And they must have been hardy guys back then. So again, Michael, I salute you, sir. And I thank you for inviting us. And it was a great time we had. And it was a little warm, but I would say to guys, hey, just think of the winter. Because <laughs> I know when we do reefs across America, it gets mighty cold out there in Litchfield on the hills. Um, I did want to say one thing. Uh, I also like to introduce Miss Bell. Miss Bell is a Air Force veteran, and uh, she's looking forward to getting on our Human Rights Commission. And, uh, you know, I was hoping that it'd be nice to have a lady on. We got all men on our board. So, Ms. Bell, thank you for being here. I do appreciate it, and we're looking forward to working with you if you do get appointed on the board. And thank you for being here. And thank you for your service, by the way. Okay. Now I have some other things I want to say, and I hope the mayor don't get mad at me. He knows I'm, I always say to the mayor, you're a good guy for a Democrat, and I'm not bad for a Republican, but he knows I love him, and I'm only teasing him. You know, I do have family members, believe it or not, they are Democrats, more Democrats in my family than there are Republicans. But anyways, I, I wrote this down, I like to say, all city-owned parks are in some need of repair, including Waterville Park. For example, the tennis court, basketball court, some new uh, signs have to be put up, and we would appreciate that. Uh, also, we should invest, reinvest throughout the city 
of water bears, especially in areas where crime is present on a daily basis, bringing back sub-lease stations, because we have a lot of COBA money coming in, and I thought that would be a good idea uh, to have a police present by putting a bite on crime before it happens. And the reason why I mention that, because St. Lucie's is going to be in, an, a nice area over there, and uh, you know, for the people in that area. And I think we should look at having some security out that way too. So that's something good that I think we should do. Uh, why do we uh, spend so much money on educational projects and agencies throughout the city of Waterbury? We should think before we go ahead and support that because I did have this on my mind and I, it is on the agenda. And if you just bear with me for a minute, I know I had it over here. Agencies, it's like the Ark Child Redevelopment uh, Center, Catholic Charities, Children's Community School, Children's Vill Village, Easter Seals, Children's Academy, Naukatuck Valley, CCCDC, uh, and uh, the Moore uh, Company, and uh, Team Slocum School, Greater Waterbury YMCA, and the Waterbury Board of Education. It didn't seem like there's an awful lot of money being spent here, and I've just, you know, I'm not against it, but I just want to let my voice be heard on this because on the uh, Greater Waterbury YMCA, I'm very proud to say that the Waterville Community Club, I think we donated about $1,500. One we minute. We saved Mr. some Spring. money up. Oh, ready? Quick, huh? We saved some money up. So, um, I mean, I don't get like that other guy again. I don't get to get one of those to go around picking up litter. When no, you go I around and pick up litter, you can get one of those. Yeah, I do. That, I, I have so. I, I haven't asked Bonnie. She's not here. I went out on Earth Day down at the old Sears parking lot where I used to work. Anyways, um, just one thing I did want to say pertaining to litter. A transfer station on Mark Lane needs security cameras outside the gate because when uh, the station is closed, and I went by there today to drop an old hassock off from my house, I noticed folks were dumping everything from A to Z. If you go there where the gate is, Mr. President, and anybody here was interested, it's on the right-hand side when you go in, and there's all kinds of debris, and people have been just throwing stuff there. And I don't think that's right. I think uh, I'm glad the mayor's here so he would know about it. And that's something I think. One more thing i got to say this. Just, it's time, so wrap it okay, up Okay, I am. I'm going to wrap it up. Remember this, my fellow American patriots. Being always vigilant is our only absolute key to freedom, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker from 585 Park Road, Thomas Pelletier. Thomas Peltier, 585 Park Road. Uh, first of all, I would like to start off by some of the comments that were made about our paving project, uh, project going on throughout the city. Uh, first of all, it was the mayor's idea uh, a couple years ago, the public felt that they didn't have any say into what streets got paved and, you know, he felt at the time you know, we call 311 and make your voice known and the engineers would go out and see how bad it is and see if it determined uh, absolute need uh, to get out there and pave it. Currently, we have streets being milled as we speak. And for the speaker to say that streets aren't getting paved, I, I have to uh, say, how did you get here today? Currently, Grand Street, West Main Street, the south end section of town, they are doing, uh, in the south end, they are currently milling uh, all from Naugatuck coming into Waterbury. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I, I don't, when, when people say things aren't happening, I, I, I mean, I don't know if they're getting out there and seeing what's going on. Currently in the east end, we have, uh, 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 gas line projects going on and I'm sure that the company like they've been doing everywhere else after they've uh, put in the um, the gas lines are going to mill it and they're going to pave it. You know this administration uh, that we have currently uh, the highest amount we've ever spent uh, to mill and pave our streets. So to say that 
you know, they're not doing it right. Uh, you know, the citizens have their say, and our engineers are going out and saying it and, and going out there and seeing what's absolutely needed. That's what we do. That's what, how we save the taxpayers' money every day. You know, it's not just simple as going out there milling tons and tons of streets and then people coming down here and yelling and screaming why are our taxes uh, so sky high. Secondly, I would ask that you pass uh, everything on your agenda tonight. Um, currently, uh, I would ask that you pass the budget transfer uh, for us to uh, do phase two, a library park. And uh, I would just have to say, um, I was mind boggled in an editorial a couple of weeks ago. I, I understand people get frustrated and don't exactly know what's going on. And, and it, it was from a person in the East End that said that the city's robbing the East End of the funds to do Hamilton Park. We're not. We're developing a comprehensive plan for Hamilton Park. That's what this administration has said from day one. And the money will be there, and when the mayor has said a project is going to get done, it's going to get done, and it's going to get done right. You know, a lot of times these budget transfers happen because if we don't use the money that we have in there, and if we don't use it in a timely order, we're going to lose it. And then the people are, are going to be upset, and I'm sorry. I, you know, we, we try to do our best in the city, making sure that each and every park at the proper times gets the due diligence that it deserves. And this administration has been committed to our park system from day one. One minute, Mr. Pelletier. No other administration was ever committed at the time. And the previous administration didn't do anything because the oversight board made all the decisions for them. So to say that the mayor is not doing enough for parks is ludicrous. So I would ask that you continue to do the right things that you guys are doing with this administration to keep the city moving forward. Thank you very much. Mr. President, that's last speaker. Thank you. Um, just before we go to um, the minutes, I do want to just say, Mr. Kondash, we don't normally do this, but um, I, I'm not sure what you listen to on the tape, but the city's program for doing streets does in fact include all of the things that you talked about, the structure of the streets, the traffic, the conditions of the roads, uh, safety issues and all of that. There's also an element in which people can call in to just identify their streets as being a street of concern, which will have our folks put it on their radar and take a look at it. But that's not the preeminent way the streets get done. It's just a way to bring a street that might otherwise escape the attention of the street department or the engineering department on somebody's radar so they can check it out. But we are doing it based on some logical order and not just who calls in the most. So just so you'll know. Okay. Uh, with that, the next item on the agenda would be the approval of the minutes for the meeting of Monday, September 6, 2022. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Lopez? I second. And Alderman Lopez, I may have to call you Alderman Roman a couple times tonight, because last week when he was doing the seconding, I kept calling him Alderman Lopez out of habit. So don't feel bad if I balance it out. So. <laughs> Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it and the minutes are approved. And Mr. Mayor, I know you have some things you want to speak to tonight. Not many, because I've already spoken <laughs> enough. I'm sure you guys are getting ready to throw me out of here. But... Um, I did want to just talk about St. Lucie's just a little bit, um, and so I appreciate our health director's comments, and, you know, we have a relationship with the Archdiocese of Hartford and all the parish priests, and the parish priest over at St. Lucie's is Father Jimenez Diego, and in conversations with him, as well as his deacon, they asked if the city had interest in the property. We talked about it for a while. At the same time, about two and a half years ago, I mentioned, and it was in the paper, that Alderman Matthews had approached me uh, about uh, better access to health care in that north end section of the city. And uh, in discussions with, often, or excuse me, Alderman Sandra uh, Martinez McCarthy, Alderwoman. 
Belinda Weaver, um, Alderman Victor Lopez. Uh, we started talking about uh, neighborhoods and what we could do to improve the quality of life in the neighborhoods, but mostly as it, re as it related to health care access. So there was a whole group of great aldermen, men and women, who visited St. Lucie's on several occasions. Uh, everyone here, as a matter of fact, that I can think of was there at least once and somewhere there two and three times, uh, especially Jeff Hunter. Now that I look at him, he was there the last time. And, you know, really, it's, it's a group effort, and we're excited about it uh, because we think that the uh, purchase price is very reasonable. Now, to um, uh, Marty Spring, the money goes to the parish, All Saints Parish right here in Waterbury, which is the former St. Anne's Parish. And, you know, it's good because they have some work to do on that building, and they need the funding to enhance the work that needs to be done, not only at that church, but some of the others. Um, at the end of the day, there were other really good questions that were brought up in our caucus and along the way. You know, our plan is, is take, to, to take control of the, of the property, which includes, of course, the church, the rectory, a garage, a lot of property, and you know, do something really special there. And there's such a need in that area. And so what our plan is, is to put out an RFQ and an RFP, and uh, healthcare providers will bid for the opportunity to build this uh, complex. There is all sorts of federal and state money available for exactly this. Uh, both for uh, COVID relief and other relief, behavioral and mental health relief. And so we feel like we will be very successful in this uh, journey. The cost to the taxpayers, is, I don't know what cost there is because it's ARPA money that will be used to purchase the church. And then after that, the memorandum of understanding for staffing <laughs> and maintenance and all the things that are associated with that kind of a property will fall on whoever the provider is. And so it's a negotiation. But at the end of the day, it's a win-win for the city and mostly a win-win for our children, honestly, who we have a, a very dense population of kids in that neighborhood. And if you remember, you have Reed School across the street. You have Walsh School within walking distance. You have the Enlightenment School. You have the Pal Center that services 3,300 children a year. I mean, it's going to be a great place for them to go and get what they need. What will they get? Medical care, dental care, mental health care, behavioral health care, and, uh, in addition to whatever else the social uh, folks and the, um, the health director thinks that they need. So that's all I have to say. We would really be grateful for your support on this project. This is a game changer for that community. It's a game changer for the city. One of the things that we're going to insist upon is that the traditional hours will be a little bit later in the evening for those parents who work and take care of their children after school and also uh, some Saturday hours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with that, just before we go into the Committee of the Whole, uh, there's an item, uh, number 30, which was sent around to you, um, <clears throat> I believe over the weekend, which is a special supplemental nutrition for women, infants, and children Contract number 2023-0045 for the period October 1, 2022 to September 30, 2023, uh, which we need to add on to the uh, agenda as item number 30. And basically, uh, rather than going into a new five-year contract because they're going to be looking for a new provider who, who better fits in with what WIC does, the city's going to just extend this for one more year. That's why this is coming to us tonight, so that we don't run out of the services for the next year while they're finding a new provider for the services. So um, with that, Alderman uh, Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to add on item 30. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and item 30 is added. With that, Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion to go into the Committee of the Whole? So moved. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. We're sitting as the Committee of the Whole. And just as a little housekeeping, um, item 12 was put, was initially showed up as a placeholder, um, and it was showed up as receiving place on file, but it's actually um, is, is an action item, and you should have gotten the um, the item at this point uh, for 12. So we'll talk about that when we get up to it. 
which is the Waterbury downtown traffic signal upgrade. Items 25 and 26 are withdrawn uh, by the Board of Education, so we won't be taking those up tonight. So um, with all of that, item number one is requesting the approval of the following um, substantial amendments to the uh, annual various annual action plans. I, uh, one would be the substantial amendment number five to the CD year 46 2021-2022 annual action plan to reallocate unused program administration funds in the amount of 310,000 and create a new f and, and create and fund a new project the library park improvements phase two and also a substantial amendment to year one to the CD year 47 2021-2022 annual action plan to reduce the Hamilton Park allocation of $773,942 to $473,942 and recreate and fund a new project, Library Park Improvements Phase Two, in the amount of uh, $300,000. Alderman Benelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number one. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. No, I'm sorry, Alderwoman Zimmerman. Excuse me. Thank you for recognizing me. I have a question on Hamilton Park, if someone could answer. What are, are we working on Hamilton Park? Are there projects going on? And then I just, I hear from, uh, there's some concern in the community about the money moving over from Hamilton to Library Park. I'm a big supporter of the Library Park project. I'm just wondering, does it really need to come from this allocation? Does Hamilton Park really not, need not? Does Hamilton Park really not need the three hundred dollars? Well, the three hundred thousand uh, dollars. The three hundred thousand dollars is what's needed to close the gap over on the library park side. There's also some deadlines that have to be met for the um, for the the deadlines can't expire on the CDBG funding side. And, you know, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit confused by there's so much questions because we've met with, uh, we've met with several people in the East End. Um, the Hamilton Park project has been a project that has been on the front burner for the city of Waterbury so for several years. We have had some public meetings. Uh, COVID absolutely impacted Hamilton Park. But Hamilton Park, by acres, is the largest park in the city. Hamilton Park has some really unique challenges because First of all, it's a very diverse area of the city. We're trying to design Hamilton Park so that it meets the needs of the people who occupy that section of the city. That's number one. Number two, the, another challenge with Hamilton Park is there's been a number of complaints from residents about speeding on Hamilton Park Road and what to do with the issue of cars using that as a shortcut from Plank Road over to East Main Street. Number three, we had one woman who was critically injured coming out of Seven Angels Theater by a driver who just ran her over, quite frankly, and it was a miracle that she survived. So there's a traffic study going on, there's engineering studies going on. It's a complicated park because there's quite a bit of water on it as well. At the end of the day, we have millions of dollars set aside for Hamilton Park. Millions of dollars set aside for Hamilton Park. $300,000 is a lot of money. But in the scheme of things for the Hamilton Park plan, it's a very small amount of money. And we were very clear about the fact that we were going to transfer the money over, but we were also infusing the Hamilton Park project with a significant amount of ARPA money. So there is, this is a project on the front burner, but we're going to do it right. And we're going to do it right the first time. And so we have a study that's been uh, submitted that has three different options. We're going to schedule a public meeting in the very near future. We've also sent a notice of, um, what do you call it, Angela, for the United um, Health? Notice of, notice of termination to United Health, which is that place that has the soccer games indoor. They've had that lease over there since 2009. That's a big part of our restoration portion. Um, we really think that that it's time. They've had a good run there, but that part of the park we're going to designate for additional parking, and we're also going to uh, make that a very special place for our very tender age children with playscapes and learning experiences and maybe a splash pad or two and all those things. So this is not anything that happens quickly, and COVID 
absolutely slowed it down, but we don't want to move forward until we have the opportunity to bring everything to the people of, east, of the East End. I have met with the president of the East Mountain Neighborhood Association. I've met with other folks out there, too. Unfortunately, as we know, as we approach a political year, it seems that it's getting turned into a political issue, which is saddening to me because every park plan in the city has been magnificent, well-funded, and came out beautifully. But it is what it is. We are where we are. We'll deal with it. We'll move forward. Hamilton Park is real. Hamilton Park is moving forward. So just to reiterate what you said, the $300,000 is not going to hinder any production or any development that's going on or any planning that's happening on Hamilton Park. Absolutely correct. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Alderman Nujame. Thank you, uh, President, for recognizing me. Mayor, was it pre-COVID when we had that meeting with the East End Community Club in the gym? What was we the had a couple of meetings. I think one of them was like before COVID and then one was during COVID. We had the consulting company there with the charts? Yeah. So the one during COVID was very poorly attended and people were still afraid. So, you know, we got some concepts and ideas and we took the information from them, those meetings and we, we came up with some really good scenarios, what we think are good scenarios. But it's, you know, ultimately there's going to be a lot of public uh, participation in this project. As I said, it's such a huge park and it offers a little bit for everyone. Um, but you go out there on a Saturday or Sunday, which I'm sure many of you have, that place is popping. It's jumping. It's busy. But it's also dangerous. The cars parked all over the place. Traffic going through Hamilton Park Road. Listen, we need to take action over there, and we're going to do it right, and we're going to do it carefully, and we're not going to be rushed. But it's going to be. It's going to kick off in the spring of 23. Are those folks still doing the study? Are we still working with them? Or are we just doing our own thing with public works? No. Of course we're working with them. No, I didn't know if something had changed over, obviously, with what happened with COVID. And uh, we've been working with them all along. The company is SLR. And they've been working on this from for the last two years, two and a half years. It's not every day. Mm -hmm. They got slowed down during COVID. But they've been working on it. The plans are really interesting. But we need some really strong neighborhood participation because of the uh, traffic flow patterns that are going to change in that area. Thank okay. you. Any further discussion? Thanks. Hearing none, then um, the motion on the floor would be to approve the uh, amendments to the uh, CD years. As mentioned, a no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the amendments are approved. Um, with that, we're going to jump down to uh, take a couple of these just out of order so folks can move on. Uh, old business item number two, which is the approval of a real estate contract for the purchase of properties at 24 Branch Street and 9397 and 101 Division Street to the St. Lucie's Church Rectory and Garage. And I would just note that the uh, uh, city plan has also approved uh, this purchase as well. It's in the. It's on the record. Alderman uh, Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve old business item number two. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Alderman Lopez. Uh, thank you for recognizing me, Mr. President. Just uh, wondering if you would consider bringing, uh, taking on item 19, which is actually the funding approval for the purchase. Not sure if it matters. Um, yeah, we'll, we, let's see how this goes. And then if we don't, we'll, we'll do 19 um, before we'll jump to that next, or second to next. Is that which? And then we'll, we'll, we'll go. Since we've got this one pending, let's go through with this one now. OK? Thank you. OK. Anything, any further discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the purchase. A no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries, um, and the uh, purchase is approved. Uh, <coughs> item number 28, which is the fiscal year 23 child passenger safety grant in the amount of $77,091.57. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries um, unanimously, and the uh, grant uh, application is approved. 
Item 19, which is the uh, budget transfer within the city's capital improvement fund for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2023, in the total amount of $400,000, which is the transfer of the price for the purchase of St. Lucie's, which, as <coughs> Alderman Lopez correctly points out, we need in order to have approved it. Is there a, a motion, Alderman Bernelli? Motion to approve item number 19. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the transfer is approved. All right. With that, we'll go back to item number two, which is a proposed opt out of the state requirements and mandates of Public Act 2129 concerning accessory dwelling units and uniform parking requirements. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number two. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the opt out, a no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the opt out is approved. Item three is a refund from Ortiz Electric LLC for a canceled electrical permit regarding 616 Washington Avenue in the amount of $157.50. <laughs> Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number three. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the refund is approved. Item four is a refund from American Heating Service, LLC, for a canceled electrical permit regarding 102 Cromwell Avenue in the amount of $157.50. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number four. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the refund is approved. Item five is a refund from Power Home Remodeling Group for a canceled electrical permit regarding 21 Bucks Hill Road in the amount of $607.50. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number five. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, the motion carries unanimously. and the um, refund is approved. Item number six is a horse testing, I'm sorry, a hose testing contract between the city of Waterbury <laughs> and Comlinks Inc. doing business as water, waterway of the Hudson Valley. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number six. Alderman Lopez? I second the hose testing. <laughs> 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 Motion having been made and seconded, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the contract is approved. And with respect to item, before we get to item number seven, we'll, we'll jump to item number 18, which is actually the funding for it. So uh, item 18 is a budget transfer within the city's capital improvement fund for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2023 in the total amount of $800,000, which is basically to fund the um, stipend for the uh, COVID workers. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 18. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the transfer is approved. Item seven is the actual um, COVID premium pay memorandum of agreement between the city of Waterbury, the Waterbury Board of Education, and 11 of the city and board unions using the funding we just approved. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the memorandum is approved. Item eight is a contract for retiree drug subsidy cost recovery services with Part D advisors for not to exceed value of $90,000. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number eight. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the contract is approved. Item nine is a contract with Evernorth Direct Health LLC, a Cigna company subcontractor of Quest Diag Diagnostics, 
to perform biometric testing for the City of Waterbury and Department of Education employees. <coughs> Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number nine. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. The ayes have it. The uh, motion carries unanimously and the contract is approved. Item 10 is amendment number one to the agreement between, to an agreement between the City of Waterbury and Granicus LLC for FOI, Municipal Data and Records Request Data Management System. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 10. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the amendment number one is approved. Item 11 is a construction contract for Grove and Adams Street drainage improvements between the City of Waterbury and Tobacco and Sun Builders Incorporated. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 11. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Alderman Zimmerman? Thank you for recognizing me. I just have a quick question. Um, the underground, uh, it says that Eversource is going to be working on this and then we're going to put in the sidewalks. When do we plan on that happening? Is that next year's project or? The sequence is uh, we're putting in drainage this year. The water department is going to be installing their water lines uh, within the next couple of weeks. Jacob's sewer has some sewer laterals due in their latest from early spring. Eversource is projecting to put in their uh, lines in mid-spring. We're looking at the April Bay time frame. After all the underground utilities are put in, uh, we're going to go back in and then we're going to actually install the road and the sidewalks. Thank so, you. So yeah, we're projecting fall 2023, uh, summer, fall 2023. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then a yes vote would be to approve the construction contract. A no vote would be to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. The contract is approved. Item 12 is a contract to be utilized for the upcoming construction contract for the Waterbury Downtown Signal Traffic Signal Upgrade State Project 151-325. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 12. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the contract is approved. Item 13 is the submittal of the City of Waterbury financial status report for the final fiscal year end of 2022. It's received in place on file. That's just item 14, which is the submittal of the general fund fund balance report for fiscal year 22. Item 15 is uh, requesting a budget transfer within the city's general fund for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2022, in the amount of $3,840,000. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 15. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries and the budget transfer is approved. Item 16 is a budget transfer within the city's water enterprise fund for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2022, in the amount of $892,405. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 16. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the budget transfer is approved. Item 17 is a budget transfer within the city's Water Pollution Control Enterprise Fund for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2022, in the amount of $699,621. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 17. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the transfer is approved. 18 and 19, we've done. 20 is a professional agreement with ReCenter Race and Equity and Education Incorporated through September 1, 2023 in the not to exceed amount of $310,160 for equity strategic plan and professional development subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Council. Alderman Bernelli. Motion to approve item number 20. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. 
All right, let's do a roll call. Alderman Bernali? Yes. Alderman Carlo isn't here. Uh, Alderman Gigi Carlo. Yes. Alderman Dorso? Yes. Alderman Hunter? Yes. Alderman Lopez? Yes. Alderman Markey? Yes. Alderman Matthews? Yes. Alderman Martinez McCarthy? Yes. Alderman Nujain? Yes. Alderman Salvio? Yes. Alderman Weaver? Yes. Alderman Zimmerman? No. Alderman Pernaruski? Yes. 12 yes, 1 no. With that, the motion carries and the agreement is approved. Item 21 is a student educational training affiliation agreement with Western Connecticut State University through December 31, 2026, at no cost to provide school counseling internships subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Council. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 21. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item 22 is a memorandum of understanding with Post University at no cost to provide college level courses to Waterbury students subject to any non substantive change approved by the Corporation Counsel's Office. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 22. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the memorandum is approved. Item 23 is an amendment one to the agreement with Curriculum Associates LLC to provide elementary mathematics curriculum subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Counsel's Office. Alderman Brunelli. Motion to approve item number 23. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the amendment is approved. Item 24 is in agreement with the following agencies for subgrantee services under the school readiness program subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Counsel's Office, the ARC Child Development <coughs> Center for $704,996, Catholic Charities for $356,960, the Children's Community School for $321,264, the Children's Village for $196,328, Easter Seals Children's Academy for $2,445,176. The Naugatuck Valley CCCDC, $187,480. Muriel Moore CDC NOI Incorporated for $740,692. Team at Slocum School, $354,816. The Greater Waterbury YMCA, $2,596,884 and the Waterbury Board of Education, $2,010,000. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 24. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Alderwoman Weaver? Mr. President, I have to recuse myself from this vote. Okay. Anything further? Alderman Lopez? Thank you for recognizing me. I actually don't have a question. I just wanted to actually say thank you to uh, Mr. Schwartz uh, because uh, I know that when we originally received the, the proposals, uh, I believe uh, there were some documents missing uh, inclusive of the actual application. Um, and you took the time to provide me with the, with the information that I had requested and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. With that, then, the motion on the table would be to approve the agreements with the agencies as I just read them. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the record will reflect that Alderwoman Weaver has recused herself from the vote. Item 25 and item 26 were withdrawn. Item 27 is a professional services agreement with the Harvard Graduate School of Education in the not to exceed amount of $200,000 to provide custom executive education program on school turnaround leadership 
subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Counsel's Office. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 27. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the agreement is approved. Item 28, we've done. Item 29, it's received in place on file. It's a submittal of the capital project and NC special programs, the quarterly budget status report. Item 30 is a special supplemental nutrition. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's special supplemental nutrition for women, infants, and children, contract number 2023-0045 for the period October 1, 2022 to September 30, 2023. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve new business item number 30. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion having been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote would be to approve, a no vote to disapprove. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the agreement is approved, or the extension is approved. Item uh, standing committees are requests for refunds for tax overpayments in the amount of $16,033.14. Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to re approve refunds. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. <clears throat> The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the refunds are approved. With that, Alderman Bernelli, I'd entertain a motion to return to the regular order of business. So moved. Alderman Lopez. I second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Those opposed? The ayes have it, and we're sitting um, in the, we're returning to the regular order of business. Following items are on the consent calendar. Item one. Item 2, item 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 are on consent to approve. Item 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 are on consent to approve. 13 and 14 receive in place on file. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 are on consent to approve. 22, 23, 24 consent to <clears throat> approve. 25 and 26 are withdrawn. 27, 28, 29. There are 27 and 28 are on consent to approve. 29 is receiving place on file. 30 is on consent to approve. Standing committee is on consent to approve the refunds. And old business item 2 is on consent to approve. Um, Alderman Rinelli, is there a motion with respect to the consent calendar? Motion to approve the consent calendar as read. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. President, yes. uh, the consent calendar for number 20. Okay. Anything further to be removed from the consent calendar? Oh, Alderwoman Weaver, yes. Which you were? 24. 24. Okay, we'll remove items 20 and 24 from the consent calendar. Any further removals? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of approving the consent calendar as read with the exceptions of 20 and 24 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously and the consent calendar is approved. Item 20 is a professional agreement with RE Center Race and Equity and Education Incorporated through April 1, 2023, the not to exceed amount of $310,160 for equity, strategic plan, and professional development subject to any non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Council. <coughs> Alderman Brunelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 20. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, a yes vote would be to approve, a no vote to disapprove. We'll do a roll call. <coughs> All member, oh, sorry. Yes. All member Nelly. Yes. All member D.G. Carlo. Yes. All member Dorso. Yes. All member Hunter. Yes. All member Lopez. Yes. All member Markey. Yes. Alderman Matthews. Alderwoman Martinez McCarthy. Yes. Alderman Nujang. Yes. Alderman Salvio. Yes. Alderwoman Weaver. Yes. Alderman Zimmerman. No. Alderman Pernaruski. Yes. 12 yes, 1 no. The motion um, is approved and the, or the motion carries and the professional services agreement is approved. Um, item. 
I'm sorry. 24? 20 was, um, yeah, the, uh, the contract is approved and the, uh, it, the contract is approved. Item 24 is the approval of an agreement with the following agencies for subgrantee services under the school readiness program subject to non-substantive changes approved by the Corporation Council's Office to the Art Child Development, Catholic Charities, Children's Community School, Children's Village, Easter Seals Children's Academy, Naugatuck Valley CC, CDC, Muriel Moore CDC, NOI Incorporated, Team Slocum School, Greater Waterbury YMCA, and the Waterbury Board of Education. Alderman Bernelli, is there a motion? Motion to approve item number 24. Alderman Lopez? I second. Are you recusing yourself too? Yes. yes oh, okay. <laughs> Alderman Martinez McCarthy, thank you. Okay, with that, is there any discussion? Alderman Lopez? Thank you for recognizing me. I need to recuse from voting on item number 24. Okay. Alderman Weaver? Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, then all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously, and the record will reflect Alderwoman Weaver and Alderman Lopez have recused themselves from that vote. Um, with that, I believe there's no further business to come before this board, so I would just like to take one moment to congratulate our colleague, Alderwoman Weaver, who on Saturday was the winner of a Silver Eagle Award for her uh, extensive community service given by the Scottish Rite of Freemasons. Alderman Brunelli and I had a, the opportunity to attend that dinner on Saturday afternoon, and I have to say that um, Alderwoman Weaver's list of uh, community service is extensive. I mean, we all know she's involved, but when you see it all laid out in one place, it's quite extensive. And I think she had the largest contingent of people from her hometown who were there to support her that day as well. So uh, keep up the good work. We really appreciate all that you do. Um, with that, is there anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, Alderman Brunelli? Motion to adjourn. Alderman Lopez? I second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. We'll see you all again in two weeks. Let's yeah. go clean the roads. And don't forget to pick up your, yes, take your pickers with you. <laughs>